wet hair design. We're going to do some finger waving. The products and materials that you may be using will be gel. You can use any kind of gel um, or a mousse or foam. Today I'm going to be using a gel. Also, you may want to have a water bottle near you. A couple of clips, shampoo comb. My two star combs that I will be using is the tail comb and the sculpting comb. Depending on the length of hair and the density, you can use a master sketcher as well. So I set that there just in case I have to switch tools. Also, you'll be using your silver clips. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is make sure that the hair is wet, okay? From the top of the eyebrow, like the arch of the eyebrow, you'll be making a diagonal parting all the way to the apex, all right, about that area. Make sure the hair is fully saturated and wet. The first thing I'm gonna do is scale. I'm gonna scale because I've already did all of my parting that I need to do. And I'm just gonna start molding and sketching out my hair design. As you guys can see, it's called a finger wave because look at that, you're using your fingers and it kind of looks like a fingerprint right there. So I wanna make sure that I just start etching out what I wanna do. I'm gonna be careful not to over direct my ridge. So I'm gonna start right back here at the top of the occipital and begin to make my C pattern right here at the ridge. I mean, at the um, top of the occipital. I'm gonna follow that all the way around. This is gonna help me determine where to actually put my first ridge all the way to the end of this design. And as you can see, I'm making my little pattern here. It does have two, space, two spaces in between. You wanna make sure that everything is going to match up. So the first thing that I did was scale out and mold what I wanted to work with first, okay? If your hair is too dry, and I know that mine is starting to dry up because I'm using gel, I just wanna kind of resaturate it so I can move the hair freely. I have my C pattern. It depends, um, it may depend on the density or the length of the hair, what side of the comb you're gonna use. I always start out with my wider tooth um, space side so that I can see exactly how much of that hair I need to make um, fit in one oblong. And I'll show you what the difference is. So I have my large that will pick up more hair, but my smaller teeth will make everything go closer together. So with that being said, I am gonna start my first ridge very carefully etch that out to see where I want everything to sit. Nice and pretty, okay? Now I'm gonna flip my comb over because now I'm gonna begin making my ridge. How do I do that? I'm gonna just put my fingers here. As much as my comb can hold, slide down. Put it in and control my ridge with my fingers. Peel my fingers up so that I'm not disturbing what I just did. From the back of this oblong, because my comb is long enough, I'm going to make my C and connect that hair. It should look like this. Don't worry about this part. You're going to control the hair, your ridge right there, and begin combing it. I just want to make that neater, so I'm going to go over it. Again, slide my comb down, stick through, and comb. Make it nice and neat. Don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen the first try. Just keep trying. 
okay? So I have that. Now to keep the hair from over directing, this is why I already scaled and sketched out my next part. So I already know where the hair is gonna go, okay? Now what I'm doing is connecting this side to the other side. And if you're a left-hand person, you can start from the opposite side. That's the side with the less hair on it. So now I'm gonna start here. Check out how I made that C slide down. Pick it up. And now I'm gonna comb it. I'm using my thumb. Control the hair. It does take time. And as you can see, I, my pattern is already going to reach to this side. Slide my comb, pick it up. Starting to look good here. Now I'm in the back of the hair. And remember, I wanna make sure that I still have that C pattern going. Take my comb, slide it, slide it right there. Pick it up and connect it to the ridge. Connect it. And peel your fingers back. Now, I've already done this side and check that out. It's going to connect. And now I can put my doll head to the side here. It's all right, because I need to make sure this is nice and neat. Up. Control the hair with your thumb. If this starts to come apart, no worries. Just go right back to it. Pick it up. Connect it to that ridge. And now it's not coming apart. Same here. Slide your comb. Push it in there. Connect your ridge. And begin combing that hair that's left in the opposite direction. Up. Next, I'm gonna go over here and figure out and make sure that everything is laying down nice and neat. I am pushing the hair a little bit to make that fingerprint look. And why isn't it doing it? Because I need to change the size of my teeth in the comb. Now the hair is gonna look a little bit better because I can get those hairs to go closer to each other. Back over here. Here's my little loose hair. You may not have enough space to create another ridge depending on how big you're doing your ridges. So I'll save this hair to show you a pin curl. That hair can stay out. No problem. Okay. And now as you can see in the back, I have this going on here. And now I'm just going to mold it. Now I have this little section over here. If you don't have enough hair on this side, you can make sh this. Just take it around the ear. This hair, 
Don't worry, I'm gonna do something with that extra hair in just a moment. But I wanna make sure that this ridge is in here. And everybody's gonna do this different. You might learn differently from the videos you like to watch. You might learn differently from another instructor. Again, here we go. I got this going behind the ear because I will do something with that in a little bit. Okay, here's the back. We're gonna finish her off. Her hair may be too long in the back. It may be too short. However, you still want to keep up with that same pattern, whether you can pinch it or not, or whether you want to put some pin curls in the back. Keep that going. Keep practicing. You want to make sure that you do this at least three times. to get it in good. Make sure you got it down, heck. Okay? So here we go. There's my ridge in the back. Now you can break this down in two sections if you want. I'm just gonna do one. And I'm gonna switch over to another tool, which is my tail comb, because this is what I want to actually scale that out. And I'm gonna make a pin curl. These are your flat pin curls. Make a flat pin curl right here. And I want it to sit within my ridge. This is gonna finish off my finger waving design. If they have a short haircut, like a pixie, you can make sure that the finger wave goes all the way down the nape section. We'll take my tail comb and get the rest of that curl in there. And scale out another. This pattern kind of shows you where to scale out and how much hair to distribute within that, um, that curl. It all depends on what design you're thinking of. You can come close to it. Okay, and take this out. I'm just gonna sit that within my ridge. Follow it all the way around. Position that. Very good. Right in there. Okay. That will be your flat pin curls. You can redefine the curl with the tail of your comb. That's what it's for. It's a good little usage. Now, this extra hair that was left behind. I'm just gonna incorporate it. You can make that go behind the ear. And here we go. Just make sure you're not sitting your clip on top of the curl because you're gonna create like a little pinch there. And just like this, you don't want to leave any hair hanging out because you don't want any fish hooks. Okay, so just take your comb and kind of make sure that's inside of your circle. I don't want to leave.
weave any hair out. It's a good thing that there's such things as pin curls. Because <clears throat> this could make up for height. It can make up for the rest of your hairstyle. Okay. And there is, wait, one more side here. This is my version. You can break this down in two different ones. How about I just go ahead and do that? Where the other one's going. Bing. Okay. And you wanna circle that in place. You can't put this around your fingers too, if it's too short. And now I'm gonna scale out another piece here because I, I know that that would have been a little bit too thick. One here. And one here at the front. Try to grab those little hairs that are wet sitting on my face. There you have it. What's your flat pin curls? some stand-up pin curl technique. I'm going to take my tail comb and I'm going to slide my comb right through and scale out a section. Doesn't have to be too big, but I am going to pick up this section right here and create my first stand-up pin curl. Being careful not to disturb my other area. a little wide, but that's okay. I'm gonna hold this here. Of course, I got all of my product on there. And I wanna make sure that this is gonna be on base. So I'm gonna take this at about a 45 above. Take my tail comb here, just to start my first pass. Create my loop all the way down to the base. And it kind of just wants to go in that curl. Let's do that again. I'll take another little section here. Now let's comb this. I am going to put it on base. I'll create one there too. Twirl it around so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. This is your base, this is the stem, and now I'm going to make the circle. Okay? That right back in there, and here you have it. Actually, let's do that again. Base, stem, and let's create our circle. And I do want to get this to be on base. You can do whatever base is, however, I'm just showing you your own base, your own base. And right there. 
This is just a stand-up pin curl. These curls are gonna create the same kind of pattern as um, you would, as if you were doing a regular um, finger wave or wet style. Here's another one. that again. Sometimes it takes a few times to get that stem and that circle the way that you want it. There we go. Now I'm just going to roll that down and I am completely on base. Okay, just looking back, over here is an example of a skip wave because that skip wave is gonna be something that starts under the ridge, okay? These are your pin curls under a ridge. That is what a skip wave is.